Hey everyone, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I'm going to be sharing a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Window Editions, and this is the follow up to my recent winter window set. So if you have this set, you are going to love adding all of these additions. If you don't have this, you're still going to be able to use this with the Master Layouts 5 die that's great for creating this pane window here or you can just use it as a standalone set. I'm gonna have so many videos for you over the coming weeks to show you how to do this, but I'm just thrilled with how these turned out. I think it's almost sold out right now and the dies just sold out, so I'm gonna be talking to you about some different ways that you could fussy cut this set. But I wanna go ahead and get into this card of how you can show peeking into the window with this cute little chair and all these different little colored and die cut elements. In addition to this stamp set, Today we're going to be using the coordinating die set, so it's going to come on a magnetic storage board. They're all shown here. Also going to be using the Master Layouts 5 die. This is that window die that Gina has available, so we're going to use this one here. If you don't have this die set, you could also use the one that comes from the coordinating winter window set. So these actually layer together to create a frame around that paned window. So either one, but I just love the detailing in this. So today we're just gonna use this one. I'll show this in combination on other cards or just with the open one later. Going to be using some card stock. So today I have got some of the Red Velvet Pure Luxury. This is four and a quarter by 11 inches. We are going to score it at five and a half inches for a top fold card. And then I've got some of the Gina K Pure Luxury Heavy Base Weight White and some of the Layering Weight White. So this Heavy Base Weight White, I'm going to use this to die cut the window. And this is four inches by five and a quarter inches. And then we've just got a piece that's going to be big enough to cut out these four elements. The chair, the tulip border that's going to fit right into this window box and then the framed picture, okay? So just whatever whatever scraps you have that you can use. You'll wanna save this piece though to put into your MISTI. It just makes it so easy for stamping those die cut images right where they're supposed to go. Just one ink pad that we're using today. I've got the Gina K Designs um, Obsidian Amalgam ink. And then to color it, I've got a combination of alcohol markers here. So you can use Copics, Arteza, Spectrum Noir. Um, you could use pencils, whatever you want to use. But I really like to have two different tones when I'm coloring. So I've got a lighter and a darker red. I've got the DR2 and DR6 for the book, the blanket, and those tulips. Then I have got the CG3 and CG4. So this is just a spring and then kind of an olive green for doing the greenery on the little plant and those stems. And then I have got a gray for shading my chair in the window box. It's so easy to do, so I'll show you that during this video. Then for adhesives, I've got some Connect glue and then some foam squares that Gina K carries to pop that up. And I've got some scissors if you need to do any of your own cutting if you don't have those dies. You'll also want to have um, some kind of die cutting machine. So today I'm going to be using my cuddle bug and then I have got the base plate, the B and the C plates for cutting that out. One more thing that you see on here that I want to point out is get out your stash of pattern paper or pick up a pack that Gina carries. This one is the Petite Patterns, and so I just love black and white and red together. The Petite Patterns pack has all of the different patterns that you see in here. So this is really fun when you're doing um, home decor cards that you can have some coordinating patterns for the chair, for the background, for the blanket. So that's really fun to play around with, and I'll show you some tips for how to pick out your patterns on that. So I think that's everything that we need. I will let you know if I forgot something, but let's go ahead and get started by die cutting our pieces. And then we'll do our stamping, and then we'll do our coloring, and then we'll do our assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut out this window first. So you'll have to let me know in the comments if you would prefer a shorter video where I have the pieces die cut already, or if you really wanna see the die cutting happening. So. 
I can see advantages either way. You just let me know and then I'll go with the majority or I'll switch back and forth if I have a lot of different opinions. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my, starting my little sandwich there. So I've got that thicker C plate on there and I'm going to grab that window. Where did I put it? Here we go. So we just wanna center this. I'm gonna put it up just a little bit higher though because I'm gonna have that window box underneath it. And I wanna show y'all that you do have options on your layout. Just gonna grab this window box piece to show you that how you wanna layer this is up to you if you want to put it at the very bottom with the flower sticking up, if you want to go up higher, and that can allow for a square card. There's just lots of different ways to do it, lots of ways to customize it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my B plate, and then I'm going to grab some extra cardstock shims because these plates I've had forever, so they do have a lot of warping. So I'm just going to take another piece of folded cardstock put this on here and hopefully that'll be thick enough but I might end up grabbing one more piece so let me put this on Get a little bit centered and because I have that craft mat underneath it it's not locking down so I apologize for it kind of moving around a little bit all right so that cut out perfectly I don't need to do another pass so you see you're just going to peel this right off and then all these pieces pop out, and I like to save these for other projects. You can also use these to create something two-toned or to put these pieces in if you wanna have it fill in the window. So I'll have some ideas for that later. All right, so I take everything out of the die. So there's our window, so I'm gonna set that aside. And now I'm going to do those scraps. So those might need a couple passes because I'm using the thinner cardstock on these. And I'm going to grab, show you that sheet. All right. So I have got the window box. I've got the little chair. Love this chair so much. And I'm not gonna do any cats and dogs today on this card, but I will do it on the next card. So I hope you saw some of the cards that I created in the live. So we've got the picture frame here. And then I'm gonna do that tulip border right here, nice for spring. Okay. Actually, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna, I'll just cut out that as well. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna put on that other, I've got so much stuff on my desk right now. I have both pieces on here. Where is that B plate? Yell if you see it. Where did I put it? Here. I do not see it anywhere. Here it is. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. I hope y'all went to the bathroom or got a drink while I was doing that. I apologize. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and we'll send this through. And that's a good sign. When you hear it cracking, you know that it is going all the way through the paper. So I love that you can just do these all at one time. All right. So take all these off. And I advise you to just put them right back on your magnetic board right away because you don't want to lose these dies. There's this window box and then there's the chair. I found a way to get them all nested on there. All right, so we're gonna pop all these out. Save this piece to put inside the Misty. So here's our little pieces. So we get to put this away. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our Misty, and I, I guess I forgot to say, if you don't have the Misty, that's fine. You don't have to use it. It's just really handy for stamping with die cuts. So have some acrylic blocks, large and small, for doing the large and small images. Okay, so I'm gonna put this into the Misty. 
All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to grab my stamp set. And we're going to go ahead and just position all of the stamps right over those holes. Get them centered. Okay. Oh, and you know what? I might have used... I use the smaller one. Okay, so these are actually layered. I forgot about that. Maybe I could do. Hmm. I think I'm just going to actually cut this one down. So I'm going to use my scissors and cut down this piece. So there is, forgot about that. There is a layering piece inside there so that you can make mats for your frames. So that's really cool. So I grabbed the smaller one. So don't. Do as, do as I say, not as I do. It's not a huge thing, but I don't, I don't want to get the die cutting machine back out. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm not going to stamp this now, rerouting. Okay, so we're going to do the tulips and the window box, and then I'll just make my picture out of one of those paints that I saved. So we're using it already. Got a little cat hair on there. So you can use these either way. There's some different ways that you can use these stamps. And I'll go ahead and stamp the cat just so the cat is done. Maybe, I'll, maybe I will go ahead and put this one in the card. Okay. All right. So we're going to close this. Ah! So I need to clean this off a little bit. Let me... It's a little bit dusty. I've been using it a lot already. Okay. Right there. All right. So now we're going to put our pieces in, and once we get this all stamped, it's going to come together very quickly. And cut. And the box. All right, so we're going to ink all of this up with the black, the obsidian. So this is her darkest ink, and the amalgam is specifically formulated for alcohol markers and I always like alcohol markers just because they blend so well it's a great way to just get quick pops of old color that will blend together all right so we're going to go ahead and just press all over you can use your chucky tool if you need help pressing on that all right, so there's my images. So we're done with this. And I'll use one of my acrylic blocks to stamp out that frame. Okay, so we've got this here. Grab this, and I'll take the picture frame. And so all the different greetings that we have in this set, the one that I used on my sample card was Wish You Were Here, but I've also got to get well soon. Bless this home, and life is good, and I think those all just really work well for general everyday occasions and go really well with the house. So I'm going to take my little scissors, or you could use a paper trimmer, and I'm just cutting this just to have just a little bit of a tiny border around the edges like my other die cuts do. And then... I can use the same acrylic block, or you can use your MISTI for, I'm going to do, do get well soon on this one, I think, because a lot of people that I know are sick right now, and I just think it's such a cute little greeting to go with that cozy chair and a cup of tea. Now you can also, you can use this portrait or landscape style for your greetings or your small stamps. Okay, so just pop that in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and color these. All right, so here's all of our pieces here. So first let's color this chair. So I'm going to show you a way that I really like to shade this chair and it's just going to make it look so much more dimensional. So what we're going to do, we want to color just these side arms 
and then the side of the arm of that chair. And then we want to give a little bit of dimension to where these cushions overlap. And it's just really going to make those details pop and make it look like there is a light coming in on this chair. So we're doing the gray there underneath the blanket. And then we're going to do gray on the side of the arm, not the top, because that would be illuminated on the side or on the top, excuse me, put just a little bit there at the bottom. Then I'm going to do this side arm here. Wish I had a chair like this. Sit and read and drink my tea or my coffee. All right, now we're going to do just the edge of the table with the gray as if the tabletop is white. And then we're gonna do just a little bit right there where it would be casting shadow down onto that table leg, okay? Then I'm also gonna put just a little bit on this coffee cup, and again, these images are so tiny, so it just takes little little dots or drops or stripes of color to add the shadows where you want. All right, so now we've got it all shaded there. Now let's go ahead and do the blanket. So I'm gonna take the lighter red first and color in just this whole blanket such a pretty red just looks beautiful with that red velvet cardstock that's my favorite red that Gina carries okay. all right and even and I'll go ahead and I'll do my tulips as well and where did those end up fall off my table oh gosh I'm just losing everything today where'd they go there we go, it's stuck to my stamp. All right, so I'm also gonna just pop in just little stripes, just dot in a little bit of the red, leaving the tops white because you know how tulips kind of have that gradient or that ombre. All right, now I'm gonna take the darker red, the DR6, put it just at the very, very bottom, and it just makes that lighter red just kind of glow. So immediately you kind of have shadows there. It doesn't take a lot. Then I'm going to look at my illustration where I have all of the little overlaps in the blanket. And you're just going to go over those and put just some stripes of color in between those folds. So you think about the light coming down and illuminating the top. So anywhere there's a fold, it's going to go under that leaving the top of it exposed and the lighter red. And then you can go along the bottom of it there. So just really simple, just adding a little bit of color is gonna give a lot of dimension to your card, okay? Now let's do the green. Oh, and I also, I use these same two reds on my book. So I've got a red book cover here, so we're gonna use the darker red on the spine, and then the lighter red is gonna be the top, okay? Very little coloring needed here. Now let's do just a little bit of the lighter spring green on the leaves. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill in. This is just really fine. So you wanna take your, your bullet tip or your brush tip of your marker and you're just barely touching to get in those areas. And then we're gonna go in with our darker green and just add it just to kind of the underside of those leaves. It's just such a little touch is all it takes. So I'm doing it just under the, the bloom of the flower and then at the base and then any dark areas that you see in the illustration. Just the bottom of those leaves and where it folds over. Just that little bit is gonna to add to your heart. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble this now. I'll need to go ahead and cut out a piece of this paper to go behind it. And so what you can do if you want is you can cut out a piece like this to center behind the window that we just cut. But that way you have to get it pretty precise as far as your placement when you are sticking it down. So I'm gonna use a larger piece but the good thing about, the cool thing about cutting this out is you would then have the 
paper for two cards that the reveal of it could go on another card to look like wallpaper looking outside instead of inside. All right, so let me go ahead and just show you all just the beautiful patterns in this pack. And the one I chose has a really art deco look to it, but there's also stripes in here, dots, a script, checkerboard, and so the, the vine is really pretty. Maybe we'll do the vine on this one just for something different. So you can test out what your different ones are going to look like, whether you're paper piecing or not, by just laying it right on that sheet, the acetate sheet has the outline on it. So I just want this to be large enough to fit behind the window, okay? I've got a little paper trimmer here, but I can also use my scissors, but this is just so that I can get it straight. And I just wanna use just a minimum amount so that I have enough for later. And if you want, you can lay that die that you used just right on there to make sure that you're cutting it big enough. And I realize this is the other one, but if it's big enough for this, then it'll be big enough for to go behind the smaller die cut. Okay, so this is going to go behind. And we're just going to kind of lay this all out to get my red card base. Oh. All right. So we're going to have this here, here, here. Now let's say though, if you wanted it to look like it was outside, pretend that you had that blended sky background, then you would just put these behind the window. So in front when you're outside, behind when you're inside. So everything that's behind the window is inside. Everything in front of the window is outside, okay? All right. So. You can decide how much of the chair you want to have showing. You can have it a little bit lower, but I'm going to put it up a little bit higher because I want to see more of it because it's going to be covered up by those flowers. All right, so let's go ahead and let's just adhere this in the middle of the card base. I'm going to use some of the Connect glue because I don't want this to be dimensional. I want it to push back so that my front of my scene can come forward, right? So just as long as I have it centered on there, I know it's gonna get covered up by my white layer. All right, and then I'm gonna place this behind it. And it's fine if this is, <clears throat> so we get this centered on here, but I just wanna see where I wanna have this and you can have it centered. I put it up a little bit higher again, just so I could see a little bit more of my chair. I don't mind it that it is overlapped by that paint. I actually think that looks a little bit more natural, but you just want to make sure that your greeting is going to be able to be seen there, okay? So again, I'm going to use my Connect glue because I don't want it popping out, even though it's a dimensional piece, a framed piece of art. I don't want it coming forward too much because it's not coming out further than the chair, okay? So I'm gonna lay this on here, and the thing I love about Connect Glue is it allows you to move it around a little bit after you lay it down. So now I've got that centered on there, and I've just got my picture exactly where I want it. All right, now I'm gonna put some foam on all of the things that I want to pop up. So I'm gonna put on just some pieces top and the bottom of the chair, and then on the back of my window box and the back of my flowers, so just one on either side. And I forgot one thing that I do like to do on this, if you have a gray marker, is I'm just going to put just a little bit of shading under this and it's going to make the window box look a little bit more dimensional like it's got those layers of molding okay so we'll put home squares on this can't wait to show you more scenes with this I just love how everything turned out 
And then we're gonna want to have, oh, and I got some ink on this, so this is actually the back side of it, but I'm gonna go ahead, you could use your sand eraser to get that off, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put my foam squares on the back of this. I'm gonna grab a couple more. Ah, I got exactly as many as I wanted. You can cut these down into smaller pieces if you want. All right. So let's go ahead. So this is going to go here. So I haven't taken the backing off yet because I just want to make sure everything is lined up because that is not easy to move once you have that on there. Okay. So I'll just get my chair where I want it. I'm going to lay my... Losing everything today. Okay, here we go. Okay, I do need to put two more on this. So wait, let me grab. Where did my phone go? Ah, uh, okay. Grab my phone. Thought I did that. I and mean, I guess I just put them on the back of my main piece. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna put the window box here, and I can go ahead and put this on before I add my flowers. I'd also love to know in the comments what your favorite image or images are from the set. So we wanna line up the window box there with the bottom. And this is just gonna slide in afterwards. So you can go a little bit lower or come up a little bit higher. If you're fussy cutting, you might choose it's drawn so that you can stamp it just right up against the edge and then you could cut it all out as one piece just to minimize having to cut both pieces. Okay, so I want my chair to be, you also, you don't want it to be too high up because this, unless you're thinking that the wallpaper is gonna be the same as the floor, that's not gonna really make sense. Just as long as it looks like it is parallel to the bottom and then that's going to get covered up so you're not going to see below that. So I kind of like it that the picture is a little bit lower and the plant is overlapping it a little bit. All right, so I'm going to put that right about there. Okay, and that's going to go right there. And we could actually go ahead and put a cat in just to make it different than my other card. Put just a little bit of gray on there with my gray marker. And it can be sitting behind the tulips, in front of the tulips, but this one's looking out. I've also got one that's looking in or looking away from the viewer. So let me add my tulips. And I'm just gonna slide these right in here. So cute. Okay. All right, so the cat can go there or here or inside on the chair. So many different fun things to do with it. I went ahead and stuck that down already have just the side of it looking in. So I'm going to get the, I'm going to grab the gray here and I'm just going to do a little bit on the face and the ears, kind of make it look like a seal point Siamese. Got a lot of cat lovers in our group. And make it look kind of like a Sylvester cat. So many ways you can do this, but I'm just going to use just the gray on this one today. We're actually not even going to see the side of this. I don't know why I'm doing that whole thing. All right. So I'm going to just dab just a little bit of my connect glue on the cat and it's going to be right up against that. So it's going to tuck just right against the chair and stick. Okay. I'm glad I cut this extra piece. Okay. So we're going to slide this right in there. And you just want to make sure that it's, it's behind this pane. Ta-da! So fun! I love this set. I'm so excited about how well everyone has responded to it and is excited about cards that they're going to make. I also have this free PDF upload that shows all the cards that I made for our release, minus a couple because I couldn't fit them all on there, and then a black and white version that just shows these layouts, no color. 
so that you can make your own decisions about that. But I really hope it inspires. This is our in our Gina K and Stamp TV design. Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Facebook group. Blech. All right. So anyway, make sure you download that. I hope you will pick up the set and the dies. And if you post some really fun creations, um, please share them with us. I would love to see them. Make sure to tag me. What are my other card? Here we go. I just have so much stuff out today. All right. So here is the original card, and then here is that second one. So you can see how different it looks with those two different wallpapers. I love them both, though. Thanks so much for watching today. Please come check me out on my blog and my other videos on my YouTube channel. More to come. Thank you so much. God bless.